Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, what are the causes and risk factors for borderline personality disorder? Now, whenever we talk about causation and mental health disorders, that is, etiology of mental health disorders, it becomes a tricky area because we really don't know what causes mental health disorders, including borderline personality disorder. But we do know that there are certain factors that are strongly associated with the development of personality disorder and we believe that some of these are likely to be causal. As is the case with any mental health disorder, we believe that with borderline personality disorder, it's a number of factors that come together that lead to that personality disorder. A person could have all of the factors that we believe are associated with borderline personality disorder and not develop the personality disorder. They could also have none of the factors and develop it. So again, whenever we talk about causality in mental health disorders, we have to exercise caution. So when referring specifically to borderline personality disorder, we believe there could be many causal elements, contributors, and risk factors. The first would be genetics. We know that if someone has a first degree relative who has borderline personality disorder, they're five times more likely to develop borderline personality disorder. Also, we get a lot of good information from twin studies. And what twin studies tell us about borderline personality disorder is that if one of the twins has borderline personality disorder, there's a 66% chance the other twin will develop the disorder as well. So there appears to be a fairly strong genetic component to the development of borderline personality disorder. Another area would be neurobiology, so the structure and function of the brain. And there are a lot of different studies in this area specifically with personality disorders, including borderline personality disorder. When we look at borderline personality disorder in terms of brain scans, we see unusual activity in the hippocampus, in the orbitofrontal cortex, and the amygdala. The hippocampus is an area of the brain that regulates behavior. The orbitofrontal cortex allows a person to make decisions, it aids in decision making. And the amygdala, of course, regulates emotions. In the area of neurobiology and borderline personality disorder, we also see irregularities with neurotransmitters, including serotonin and dopamine. Now, whenever we talk about the structure and function of the brain and neurotransmitters in terms of borderline personality disorder, it's important to note that we're not sure in all of these studies if those changes cause borderline personality disorder or if borderline personality disorder cause those changes. It could be in a number of instances that through the development of borderline personality disorder, these changes in the brain occur and these neurotransmitters appear at different levels. Another area of potential causation and risk factors is the environment. And we believe that there are a lot of elements that are associated with borderline personality disorder that likely do have some causative role. One of these major elements is abuse. And we see this with a number of people that suffer from borderline personality disorder. Particularly common would be emotional and physical abuse, and even more common than those is sexual abuse. It's estimated that about 70 to 75% of individuals with borderline personality disorder experience sexual abuse in their childhood. The evidence also suggests that verbal abuse can have a significant impact. There are studies that show that if an individual was verbally abused, they're three times more likely to develop borderline personality disorder, as well as narcissistic personality disorder, obsessive compulsive personality disorder, and paranoid personality disorder. We also know that neglect and abandonment are associated with the development of borderline personality disorder. If an individual is separated from a parent, this early parental loss, whether it's through death or divorce or some other factor, is associated with a higher risk of developing borderline personality disorder. Other factors related to the family include unstable family relationships, being exposed to a high degree of conflict or hostility, and being exposed to inconsistent parenting. So when we look at all these factors, we have genetic factors, neurobiological factors, and environmental factors that all come together in a way, we believe, to cause the development of borderline personality disorder. Again, we don't really know what causes it. These are just factors that we find associated with borderline personality disorder. It's also worth noting that some of these 
factors like abuse, neglect, and abandonment are not only associated with the development of borderline personality disorder and other personality disorders, but also mental health disorders that aren't personality disorders. So we know that abuse, specifically, seems to be linked to a number of mental health disorders. So we believe it could be etiological, and we know certainly that it's at least a risk factor. I hope you found this description of the causes and risk factors of borderline personality disorder to be interesting. Thanks for watching.